The second chance of Zotic has been around for a few months now, and at first it sounded quite amazing to use an end game as another way to play Champion Shields. However, upon using it, it couldn't break shields in one go, and it kind of fell off from there. Push forward a few months later, and this got rightfully adjusted, but the question still remains if it's worth using or not. In today's video, I'm going to go over my experience with it and what build is best suited for the Zodic so you can get your bang out of it. You can make it usable in any content you wish, but the weakness towards the throwing shield part itself may put some users off with it using it overall. But do you know what else may let you down from time to time? Definitely not this channel right here. In fact, if you enjoy the content, then do leave a like, a sub, a share, and turn on your notifications as it really does help me out. Upon expecting Exotic, you will first be notified about how it's useful for breaking shields and how you can get two instead of the standard one. This is similar to how Offensive Bulwark gives you two shield throws instead of one while in your super, but with the added Exotic, you can pierce shields and make a life easier in very tough environments. In our case, I intend to make full use of these by pushing the build to spam throwing shields non-stop so we can lock down areas easier and prevent ourselves from being overrun. This is actually quite useful in GMs as it saves ammo and even sometimes grenades if against minor combatants, so if you want to get rid of small groups, you can just use your melee at a safe distance and use your heavy items on whoever you plan to face later. But anyways, let's go over the main setup. We have Bastion, where casting your super will grant allies overshields. It will also make our barricades produce overshields as well, and regain lost shielding over time. Next, we have our offensive bulwark aspect, as this will provide us an increase in grenade recharge time, increased melee damage and range, melee final blows extend overshields, and we'll get two shield throws while within our super. For fragments, we have Echo of Exchange, where melee final blows grant grenade energy. Echo Explosion, where Void Ability Final Blows against targets cause them to explode, and Echo of Undermining, where grenades weaken targets by 15%. For stats, you want 70 18 Resilience, 19 Discipline, and 30 to 15 Strength. For Key Mods, you'll want Taking Charge, where you become charged with light by picking up Orbs of Power, Mini Wellmaker for quitting wells via Mini Kills, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 Intellect boost. Heavy Handed, where being charged with light, you regain half your melee energy upon using a charge melee. And Balfour for Well, where you get two wells instead of one. Now, as shown, I intend to rely heavily on using our melee effectively, so we can get the very best out of the exotic on hand. When I use Monte Carlo or weapon with Pugless attached, we can get our melee energy back within a few seconds, and upon kills, this will feed back into the Echo of Exchange fragments, where we can get our grenade energy back as well. This is why I have my grenade stats so high and strength stats so low, as the method of getting my melee energy back quickly outweighs the speed that I can regain my grenades at, and this too shows how you can achieve the same thing without needing to sacrifice the stats in the mean run. It also means that if you can't get your discipline stat to 90 or 100 like shown, then it's not a big problem, although it should still be relatively high if possible. For weapons, this will come down to personal choice, as each endgame content you do will require different things. My setup is recommended for this season's arc theme, but other choices still stand. Within my primary slot, I have the Monte Carlo for fast melee region speed, while using its exotic trait, and this is the best weapon to use for the following exotic in hand. The fact that we can build up melee energy via hits alone, and also get the chance for a full refund as well, means that we can play it safe and not worry so much about needing to net kills. If you want this build to feel viable in game, then I would recommend you get the following as it's night and day compared to heavily investing into your stats. However, Pugless is a great part to use instead if you don't have Monty, as it does require you to get kills to activate it. If you can get a Smite of Moraine or a Blood Feud with a the perk, then you should be good from there. A secondary can be anything you like, but your heavy should be a machine gun so you can make full use of the one slot heavy machine gun scavenger mod. A 7th Serra's Sword with Warpaw and Autoload and Holster is a great arc weapon to have on hand this season, as its base damage and perk combo means that you can do big damage and burst, and not worry about reloading all the time. On the other hand, Corrective Measure and Commeration are two Roy weapons that are raid exclusive, but are worth the investment with their great perk pool and damage over time. For stats, as mentioned, we need to cover both Discipline and Strength stats effectively with each other, as I tend to use them in sequence. 
What I plan to do is use my melee to build up grenade energy via the Echo Exchange Fragments as mentioned before, and this should be enough to make the build usable in all contents without needing to heavily invest into stats or perks. Now, what I mean by this is that my strength stat is around 30, and this can be increased to 50 or more if you choose to, but I only recommend this if you don't have the same things that I do. You'll be able to get the fragment mentioned earlier, as that's part of the voice subclass in general, and invigoration and distribution both come naturally. The ones you may struggle with is Monte Carlo and Heavy Handed mod, which will require you to play the game quite a bit. I believe you can get Monte Carlo from the Shadow Keep DLC, which might be a pain for some, so having a weapon with Puglis might be better overall. Heavy Handed now can come into rotation via Ada, and this is very unpredictable, so it's not guaranteed you'll get it anytime soon. If you don't have Monty or Heavy Handed, then it's not a problem as we can easily replace them with alternatives, like mentioned. I would highly recommend you add on the Impact Induction mod so that every time you melee someone, you can get grenade energy back doing so, and you'll be making full use of it via this build. I would then increase your melee to 80 to 100 if you possibly can, and then reduce your grenades down so you don't have to worry so much about the rest of your stats. If you do just this, and have the Puglis perk available, then you should be able to get away with not having what I have as shown. Your discipline should stay at 90 to 100, unless otherwise, as I don't intend to use additional grenade based mods or perks to sustain it, just my fragments will be used a lot here. As mentioned, you may want to reduce this down if you don't have some of the key items I have, which is fine, but I recommend you explore your options first before delving in. If you find that you'll be using your grenades more to proc wells, then go ahead and swap out the midi well maker mod for the elemental ordnance mod instead, as there's no point in wasting valuable slots. Left over wise, we have kinetic and harmonic siphon mod for creating orbs of power, machine gun scavenger mod for increased machine gun ammo, and explosive finisher mod for getting a full grenade back via finisher for one fifth of your super. Now, here are the mods combined into one to make it easier for you to take notes on. Go ahead and pause the video here and do what needs to be done. For head, we have discipline, harmonic siphon, connect siphon, and taking charge mod. Arm, we have discipline, and melee well maker mod. Chest, we have strength, thermal shot plating, concussive dampener, and frontal wisdom mod. Leg with minor resilience, machine gun scavenger, invigoration, and heavy handed mod. Mark, we have discipline, explosive finisher, distribution, and bound for well mod. As the exotic has been given a second chance of life, no pun intended, I want to see if the exotic update really does make the exotic worth investing in. The results for this is mixed as it has a place in endgame, but its usage is easily covered by weapons that excel well within the champion mod in name. Now if you plan to use this a lot, then you'd need to lean heavily into the exotic and strength stat to do so, which not everyone will want to do. I've given the build a try in GMs as that's why I thought, testing wise, we could see how it fares, and to be honest, it's still 50-50. It does break shields in one go against barrier champs, and is really useful for when your main anti-champ weapon isn't reloaded in time or available. You also get 2 instead of 1, so you can throw them back to back against other targets, net a few kills, and then build it back up again via your Monty or Pugilis, whatever. And lastly, you can then proc an overshield with it for extra protection or demand. It's great when you focus heavily into the aspect itself, as this can be used non-stop, and with Echo of Exchange on demand, you can get easy grenade energy back without needing to invest further, and vice versa. And yet, that's where the pros ends, as if you plan to use this in GMs a lot, then you may struggle with getting kills most of the time. Now, because of the differences in light levels in GMs, Using this to take out even the minor combatant is quite issue at times because of their BV health. You may get them sometimes, while other times you may struggle, and this here can make using the setup feel like a wet noodle. You also have the issue where shield's aim isn't as sticky as it should be, where in some instances it will completely miss even when it's quite close to them. I feel that like the build in general is great when in Legend to Master content, as the combatants are noticeably weaker, but still a challenge and your shield would still do good damage against them. But in GMs, it's a slight struggle with the damage difference, and the only way to make it effective is to spam it non-stop like shown. 
This is the best version you use if you want to use your shields against everything you face, and it works with dudes in a lot of environments. However, it won't overthrow things like the Heart of Inmost Light, as it lacks the strength to do so, and with limited options available for fragment slots, it lacks the freedom for users to lean even more into it and see a major difference towards its base form. Still, I recommend you give it a try as it's quite fun to play with and it's refreshing to try out. Just don't expect a lot from it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, a share, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content and banter. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.